Welcome back to another episode of Heal Profoundly and Enduringly. So happy to see you here on this Monday of Thanksgiving week for those of us who are in the United States. But we are talking to Jess, who's actually from Canada today. So I'm going to introduce her in a moment, but get out your pen and paper and know that this show is really all, this is for you. This is for you to gather resources and tools and connections that really allow you to feel empowered to be your own healer and to step into that next level version of yourself. And Jess Neary is a mother of three young children, a wife of nine years to her soulmate, an avid gardener, loves new adventures, and is an international interior design and feng shui. Is it feng shui? Feng shui. Feng shui. Feng shui. Feng shui. Yeah. Feng okay. shui. Fun. Feng yeah. shui <laughs> consultant. You can help me with my my words today with Jess Neary Designs. Jess helps design personal and professional spaces that feel good and teaches virtual design classes. She understands how the spaces we occupy reflect our story. I'm kind of scared for you to come into my house and holds the key to unlocking future potential. With a feel good space to support your healing and life journey, anything is possible. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for the introduction. <laughs> You're so welcome. So today, Jess is going to be talking to us today about healing your home and healing your life. But to, the first thing that we're going to start with, which we always do on this show, is what is that one thing that you feel is necessary to heal profoundly and enduringly? I love this question um, because there's so many different ways to answer this question that are really important and impactful and po like powerful on one's healing journey. The way that I've chosen to answer the question is to really acknowledge that to have deep and profound enduring healing uh, is to have that honest look at yourself, your life, and in my particular case, looking at your home as well. And having that honest look and perspective can bring up quite a bit, but it's also you know, alongside that, having that self-compassion and, and not really doubting yourself as well and that confidence. But I think having that really strong, honest perspective or view on yourself and your life, it gives you all those little nuggets that are ready to be excavated and, and healed really in your yeah. life. So yeah, I think having that honest look is terrifying. It's very scary. It's not easy by any means. However, when we have that honest dialogue and discussion with ourselves, then we're able to have that uh, shift in our, in our life through that awareness. Yeah. yeah. I really love that you're using the word honesty. I think that's a huge, I know that's a huge piece of this because it's like, you know, I've been a therapist for 20 years. And so people would come in and they'd just be like, I'm so embarrassed to tell you this. I'm like, dude, this is a space. This right. is a space, you know, Absolutely. like being able to have that space where you can just say like, this is what I keep wanting, but it kind of makes me feel like a jerk or it kind of makes me feel, you know what I mean? Like those things that come up for you that you're a little hesitant and like timid about sharing means that you're in shame about them. And the more that we can honestly own what we want and realize there's nothing wrong with us, the, the, honestly, the quicker we're going to heal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. So <laughs> can you please tell us what feng shui is and like, how <laughs> you can even use it since I can't even freaking pronounce it. <laughs> So feng shui is a practice that had originated over 4,000 years ago in ancient China. And most individuals would look at feng shui or have a bit of like familiarity by looking at the compass direction, you know, having your space oriented based on the northeast, southwest direction. However, the feng shui that I practice and have studied is known as BTB feng shui. It's black hat Buddhist tantric feng shui. And it's really, yeah, it's a mouthful. So BTB feng shui is like the best way to yeah, acknowledge that. Um, it is a, a school of thought within feng shui that our space is a reflection of ourselves and our life. Therefore also the direction that we're going in our life too. So while we're healing, while we're going through transitions and shifts and sort of like up leveling our life in all areas, uh, we can look at our space as a way to really help empower and support us through that. And 
the approach that I have with this is very much in the very tangible, practical design elements as well. So I also studied and practice interior design. So together, we're able to look at the energy flow in the space and how it physically manifests through decor choices. So colors, fabrics, the decor, um, if there's clutter, if there's not clutter, you know, the, the items that you choose to sort of surround yourself with is setting a certain vibration, a certain frequency. So when we ourselves are looking to heal and, and sort of move forward in our life, whether that be in our career, whether that be in our health, whether that be in you know, our, our financial wealth and abundance. There's so many different areas that this could be kind of how it could you be how someone could be drawn to this area of healing and creating a space that's really calling in those opportunities and attracting your manifestations with ease is just this beautiful way of creating a beautiful life, one that you feel again empowered and supported loved and to love and to share with others too. Mm. I love that so much because I remember when I first started learning about it, I learned that like the back left corner is the abundance corner, right? (laughs) Your home and like the elements at the front door and just, you know, I'm just kind of mindful of having space for energy to flow. Yes. And I feel like that's just, that's just the start, right? Like that's just the start, but I think it's, there's a combination of energy flow and like that aesthetically pleasing vibe that gets set, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is certainly a practice that's constantly evolving as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've noticed, but I certainly have. I mean, when I began practicing feng shui six, seven years ago, my home looked very different at that time. Mm -hmm. And through the years, it shifted significantly. Because as I've grown and evolved, so too has our space as well. And, you know, working with clients, same thing. I've noticed, you know, certain clients that I've worked with like regularly, like every year or two years, there's always a little shift, which is actually like a monumental shift that's occurring in their space because it's this beautiful synchronicity with life and um, how we choose to express ourselves and how we're really flowing with our day-to-day life and needing different um, arrangements perhaps and again decor and all the things to feel supported on that next step on your journey. Yeah it's so interesting because like even in our bedroom I re- we realized this like not even that long ago our blinds were always down during the day and we oh, and it's yeah. just so funny because um, neither, both of us are like, how did we not notice this? Because now every morning, you know, we make it a practice to open our blinds and we're like, our bedroom is so it's like 18 million times more gorgeous with the blinds up and, and it like shines down the hallway. So even if you're not in that room, you can feel that natural light coming. And I'm just like, this is a game changer. And so when you're talking about like those tiny little shifts, that you can refine over time. It doesn't have to be big yes. things. Like you can get one thing for your desk that then becomes a focal point that you're like, oh my gosh, that makes me feel so much better just to add that little thing. And yeah. so I love that, that it can be that easy. It can be that simple. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that you're opening the blinds in the morning. Like it's such a beautiful practice. And I see it very much as like waking up your home as well, right? Because the sun and the natural light is that fire element, the fire energy. So it just lifts the energy automatically. And that shift or that practice then compounds over time as well. So, you know, it can also be a very grounding practice. It could be an intentional, like intention setting practice for the day, for the week, for the month, however you choose. So there's so many different layers to even that one like ritual, essentially, Mm -hmm. that you've established. Yeah, that's, that's what we do in our home. It's like the first thing, certainly in in my bedroom and next is like, I go around our home and, and wake up all, all the windows and all our children's spaces too. And it just, it's just so, I don't know, it's clearing as well with the sun coming in and it's really nice. Yeah. yeah we do that with our kids too. And my son, 
he's 12 and he's just like, I like a dark man cave. I'm right. like, sorry, sucks to be you. You can put a dog <laughs> in her, but it's open. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Especially with the adolescent brain. Like, come on, dude. I, that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> Our oldest is nine and we're like, we're, we're stepping into it. So yeah. I know, I know it's coming. I know what to expect. <laughs> when, <laughs> when Just open the windows. I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My hope is, and, you know, very intentional as well as establishing these practices in our home to model that for them as well. Yeah, so that yeah. when they also go through their shifts and, and their healing journey, then they have these tools accessible to them, no matter what space they're in. So I so feel you. I just did a post on that yeah. the other day with a picture that my daughter, that my seven-year-old drew, because it was just like, you know, you, you don't recognize sometimes what they're taking in because you're just living it. Right. Like I'm just right. living. It. Um, but like two things, like I was flustered the other day with something that happened and I don't get flustered much anymore, but I was flustered for right. maybe 15 minutes or so. And she was just like, call in your spirits. Like they always tell you what to do. Like, come on, you know, and it was Aww. just so cute. And she's like, mommy, like they're always there for us. Like they always, and I'm like, Ah, like the things that I just don't realize that she internalizes, you know, and then she drew this and, and I just gave her some drawing time and she drew this picture of her yeah. hand. It's like, I am me. I am strong. I am. And I'm just like, ah, oh. I'm like this yeah. everything, you know, and it's just so yep. beautiful that they will, they'll just take those practices. And that's why when you say yeah. it compounds over time, that also yeah. includes the people that are in our world who are then reflecting back to us that mm -hmm. beauty is even more enhanced. And then we're even more motivated to keep doing these practices. Absolutely. It's just like this positive and forward and uplifting spiral, right? Wow. Where it's just constantly being reflected back. So sometimes it's even taking that time to appreciate the practice. And this is, you know, for sure, like in your particular case and in my particular case, opening the blinds, but looking at the ways that we choose to beautify and care for our space mm -hmm. um, and even just giving that a bit of weight and caring that and, and appreciation and, and being grateful for it, taking that time, mm -hmm. five seconds, 10 seconds, like it doesn't have to be anything, you know, five, 10 minutes or an hour, but you know, that little bit of care is really, I don't know, it's, it comes back, it comes back to you. And again, the compound, it just ripples such a wide, wide way. <laughs> It does. I even feel that in my business too. That's one of the things that I actually did this weekend was like declutter my business. You know, there Perfect. was just like a bunch of like random little things and I'm like, okay, let's streamline this sucker. You know, I was like feng shuiing my business. Yes. And I was like, oh, I just feel like there's more room for it to breathe. And so feng shui doesn't have to just be your home, you know, like it's, it's Absolutely. about creating that space and that energy flow and simplifying. Yeah. Would you say that simplifying yeah. is a big piece of it? It's huge. That's a huge yeah. piece of it. Absolutely. Because when you simplify exactly that is that you then have the ability for energy to flow when we sort of complicate things. And I say complicate as, as if that's the opposite to simplification. It just doesn't have that same energetic quality as when you simplify. When you simplify, things get very focused. Mm -hmm. And when we know when we become focused, then we're able to put more time and energy and effort into a particular project or relationship or activity. And it just becomes much more easier and convenient and accessible in our life as well. Yeah. 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 I love that. I know one of the things you talk about too, is clearing your space energetically, like cleansing mm -hmm. it, right? Physically right. and energetically. So can you just talk yes. about that a little bit? Absolutely. So our space from a physical cluttered perspective um, has that physical manifestation of, let's say, items that we would deem to be clutter. And that could be, you know, um, your, I'm going to use this as an example of a book collection, for example, that's got books stacked on top of each other, but it's not necessarily easy to access. So it's the organization of it that can be cluttered or consider clutter. Um, but likewise, same thing with like actual clutter that would be most obvious. Um, I don't know, like a wardrobe, for example, that has all kinds of clothes in there that are no longer being worn. Maybe they don't fit properly. Maybe they're just like 
missing a button or needing to be fixed, like that would be also clutter as well. Mm -hmm. And what is doing this physical clutter is preventing that flow of energy and removing that simplicity as well that we were just talking about. Yeah. Now from the energetic clutter, because the thing is, is when we have the physical clutter, there's still that energetic component as well. And even the most clutter-free, physically clutter, like clutter-free spaces can still have remnants of like energetic clutter. So we're talking about if you're in the space and a bit you know, anxious or overwhelmed, or if you have guests come over or a client that's visited, um, even talking about you know, office space, you know, digitally and virtually meeting yeah. with clients, like that still leaves a bit of like an energetic signature and vibration. Mm -hmm. And so there's different ways that we can shift the energy apart from just physically decluttering. And there are multiple ways that we can practice this. Uh, essentially, it's cleansing the air and inviting in positive energy. And, you know, we can light a Palo Santo stick, we can have a sage wand on hand. But one of the ways that I really enjoy cleansing a space energetically is by using salt and essential oils as well. And even combining the two together can be incredibly powerful because both elements are from nature and um, are these beautiful tools that we have access to in using. Mm -hmm. And so when we use these tools, we're then able to, again, really cleanse the air and invite positive energy into our space. We're also being very mindful during this practice of cleansing the energy as well. So we're sort of setting the intention, setting the intent, Inten intention and the attention in the space as well. So it's a very powerful practice that one can do when they feel like, you know what, my space is set up exactly as I want it to be. Um, another great time to practice this would be after renovations um, because there's a lot of energy that gets stirred up during a renovation time. Um, and there's a lot of people perhaps in your space too that ordinarily wouldn't be. Um, and also moving into a new home as well. That can be a really great way to kind of cleanse the previous homeowner's energy and reset the space with your own and feel grounded and supported and empowered in the space as well. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think about that all the time when there's workers here for an extended period yes. of time, right. And just kind of like just resetting, just recentering yeah. and, and recentering. Yeah, reminding ourselves where we're coming from here as a foundation. Um, yes. So when you, when you cleanse with salt and essential oils, mm -hmm. do you put the salt in a bowl? Like, how do you right. actually do that practice for people who don't know? Absolutely. And there's a couple different ways that we can use salt to cleanse the energy in a space. And how I look at this is very much like, as if you yourself are going for a salt bath, I do them all the time. Mm -hmm. I go in and then I come out and I feel so, so good. It's just very relaxing. Um, and comforting, and it just feels really good. And that's always been kind of the basis for all practices and tools that I use is really how does it make an individual feel. And when we're using salt in our space, one way is by simply putting the salt, and the salt could be Himalayan, Himalayan salt, could be sea salt. Um, of course, if you have just the regular table salt, then that, that works too. Um, but certainly the Himalayan salt, the pink Himalayan salt and sea salt itself are really great. They're very powerful. They're mined in a very different way and, and kind of brought into our lives. So having it placed in a bowl and you could even simply add like three drops of cinnamon essential oil or frankincense essential oil or another one that I really enjoy is a citrus. So lemon or lime or bergamot or uh, lemongrass is really great at purifying the energy as well. I would put in three drops um, and setting that in the center of a space or in a corner of a space. And what you can do is just when you're doing this whole practice, setting your intention of cleansing the energy, you can offer visualization of basically the energy from the bowl 
circulating the entire room or area that it's located. And then you're going to let it sit and kind of work its own magic for however long you feel is necessary. Sometimes I've left it for three days. There's sometimes I've left it for a week or more. Nine days is a very powerful time. We're working with numerology, nine symbolizing um, the endings, but also new beginnings. So a bit of a completed cycle can be very beneficial as well. And it just kind of does its thing as it sits. And after this period of time, what I would recommend doing is actually discarding the salt outside um, in earth so that it's sort of like re returned back to earth to be transmuted. And, and then there you go. But I would really also pay close mind to how the space feels before, yeah. during, and after. Because when we start to really feel into these practices, it again, further accentuates its magic and how it's able to support us moving forward. So if you notice the change and you're able to really bring your attention to that, then you're more apt to do it again and you're going to be motivated to do so. And then it's going to be that tangible, practical tool that you can use anytime you feel like it's necessary. So I have two questions for you around this ritual. One mm -hmm. is, <clears throat> and of course you can add like music and frequency music and stuff, right? Too. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, do you recommend opening the windows or not? So you can, mm -hmm. um, however, with salt, I don't, it's not something that I say is recommended or necessary mm -hmm. versus like a Palo Santo or sage, right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. with the smoke, you kind of want an open window for it to dissipate and, and exit. <laughs> yeah. However, with the salt, the salt itself is absorbing right. that energy. So when we take it out at the end of the practice, that's the that cleansing or clearing and sort of like, um, again, transmuting it even further and just like giving it back to mother Earth to, to transmute it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. And then my other thought yeah. is pets. Yes. Like, <laughs> can you cover the bowl and make <laughs> little holes in it or something? Cause I'm just like, dude, if I do nine days, my dog is going to be inhaling <laughs> salt and frankincense. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Well, you can certainly put it up like on a ledge or a yeah. table. Like it doesn't have to be on the floor. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but <laughs> that's a good point because some would have cats that might be curious and dig it up or knock it over. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Um, I mean, plastic, I feel like would conceal it. And, but if you have yeah. the holes in it, then it's like an intentional, but some sort of like a netting right. would be that's really great. Yeah. Or like pantyhose. Like oh, there you know? we go. Yeah. Right. Because I never wear those secure. anyway. They're itchy. I know. Same here. I've got some just sitting around. That could be a really great way to use them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Yeah. Because that was my yeah. first thought. I was like, my dog is going to lick that up. It's so okay. <laughs> perfect. Well, I think that's really important to note as well because in every home, there's like different situations, but there's always ways to work with it too. <laughs> um, but I, 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 what I do personally, on top of that, now I was just in the hotel Friday evening, so a couple nights ago. And when I go to a hotel room, I do a clearing myself because there's been a lot of people in these hotel rooms. There's a lot of intentions there. And for peace of mind and just even to have that deep restful sleep, what I do is, is bring salt. And either I'll do like a salt ball, like bowl, sorry, and leave that in the room to sort of do its thing. Um, but what I chose to do this time, and I've done this in our home as well, is actually put a narrow beeswax candle in mm. the center of the salt and mm. then light it. So it's, it just offers like a whole other mm. way of transmuting the energy and, and creating that ritual as well. So definitely using salt is kind of the, the, base of it and then you can call in um different various methods of through intuition of how to best remedy the situation to cleanse the energy in the space yeah and i will say I slept so good that night <laughs> i felt rested the next morning and that is not always the case yeah. um so i think i'm going to do this more often i've done palo santo before but 
the windows don't really open I the know. idea of having smoke in the room i don't know it's not yeah. ideal <laughs> no i love this because i'm going to a hotel this week for thanksgiving so I'm like, this is perfect thank you yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Please try it and let me know. <laughs> I will. I'll let you know that I sleep like a baby and it'll be yes. awesome to do. So, um, so I, I know you talked about, you know, the salt and the essential oils come from mother earth. And I know you like to really utilize plants and mother nature mm -hmm. to assist in the healing process in general. So can you just share yeah. a little bit about that before we close up? Yeah, absolutely. So it's really important. Um, for myself and the way that I choose to serve others as well. So when I'm working with clients um, using items that I would say are like ethically sourced, um, but also some like products that are of the nature and have very little tampering with that. And so that then can extend to, you know, for example, because we have the holiday season coming up too, like choosing gifts that are made locally and from those artisans who are very intentional in their practice and their craft as well by creating these items and beautiful gifts with items that they've sourced ethically, but locally and, and that. So I really feel really good <laughs> with, mm -hmm. within myself knowing where where my money is also going and how it's able to contribute back to sustainability and sustaining this wonderful community that we live in and rather than sort of harming, <laughs> I should say. Yeah. I really, really, I think that's so beautiful because it's really about, it's a devotion, right? It's a devotion yeah. to humanity. It's a right. devotion to like, the people who are doing things their way, right? And and really coming yes. from this heart-centered, brave, soul-led space. Absolutely. That's really beautiful. Yeah. I love so that. I think that's definitely something to be mindful of as we're coming into the holiday season. And there are so many local crafters and and shops and boutiques and businesses that are exactly like heart-centered, soul-led, like. Oh, it's just, it's just this really beautiful way to give back, yeah. but also receive the mm. same time. Yeah. But receiving like, like, it's interesting. Cause I got this card deck. Um, I don't know. It was a couple of weeks ago. I got this new card deck on Etsy and man, I mean, mm. this is what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, the way it was packaged, you know, just, just everything that she put into it was just so intentional and so beautiful. And she like wrote me this little handwritten note and I have this little card, you are loved. And just like, just such sweet, thoughtful, like it's not just about supporting her because I love doing that, but it's also like, you feel so much more special and it's receiving because it has that personal touch. It has it's just, those are the little moments, you know, that really, really Absolutely. add up and make you feel like I'm connected. I'm loved. We're all here for each other and with each other. It just feels amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. Yeah. So I'm going to drop your links here, love. As I always say at the end of this show, um, if you connect with Jess, if you feel like you just really like her vibe, you might even not fully understand some of what we're talking about and that's fine. But if you're like, she's just so calming and I really like being in her presence, like reach out to her. Everyone on this show is really open and receptive to receiving anything, any kind of feedback you have, or if there's something she said that either that activated you in some way, and it could be that it activated you in a good way. And it could be that it activated some resistance in you either way. It's a great opportunity to connect, right? That, that that's the Absolutely. intention here is to just learn from one another and, and share from one another, allow ourselves to hold one another as we continue to expand. So is there anything else that you'd like to share before we close up? Hmm. When we're taking an honest look at our space, again, remembering that compassion side of things too, because it's through compassion and love that we're able to change uh, and shift the vibration in this space. So yeah. 
when making changes, bringing that love into it is going to be hugely beneficial and very much the feng shui way. <laughs> yeah. And not like checking it off the list. Okay. I, I got that room cleansed. I got that room cleansed. Like really being like sitting with it, being intentional, not being like, all right, I'm putting bowls everywhere in the house and you know, <laughs> like it, not to make it this rushed checking off the list. Process. Exactly. Right, right, right. Absolutely. <laughs> I love you. Exactly. (laughs) Patience with ourselves comes with that. So absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. I always love spending time with you. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. This was absolutely beautiful. I'm really honored to be here. You're so welcome. And friends touch base with Jess. All of her links are here in the comments and I will see you on the next episode of heal profoundly and enduringly. Bye for now.